Okay, I'm, good morning. I'm Yoko Kamura. Uh, I'm a PhD candidate working for for Keio University. And today I'd like to talk about our study of germanium self-diffusion in compressed glycerin germanium. And this work has been collaborated with Tokyo State University, Japan, and UC Berkeley, the United States, and the University of Warwick, uh, UK. So I'd like to start my talk with introduction. So germanium has inherently high whole mobility, uh, which is about four times higher compared to, compared to silicon at room temperature. And especially the whole mobility of germanium can be enhanced uh, by compression strain by approximately a factor of two at even at room temperature. So we focus on that high whole mobility of germanium, strained germanium, to use for, for high mobility channel P-type MOS transistors. And germanium self-diffusion in compressive strain germanium is important for the development of strain germanium-based MOS technology because the study of self-diffusion leads to understand kinetics of dopant diffusion and activation, and also to understand properties of native point defects, uh, which are essential to, to design appropriate device processing schemes. So today I would like to uh, present our experimental study of cell germanium cell diffusion in compressed wilson in germanium by using our uh, germanium isotope technology and also of growth technique of low dislocation density silicon germanium virtual substrate. So this is the sample structure which we have fabricated for this study and we grew first 80% uh, silicon, oh sorry, germanium rich silicon germanium virtual substrate by uh, chemical vapor deposition. And then we grew uh, 50 nanometer thick silicon germanium buffer layer uh, by molecular source, source, solid source molecular beam epitaxy, MBE, to, to smooth the sample surface and to avoid the contaminating uh, strained germanium layer coming after this layer. Uh, and then uh, germanium, uh, compressed western germanium isotope uh, was grown on the buffer layer. And this layer was composed of alternating layer of uh, natural germanium, which is stable isotope germanium and natural germanium. And each layer was eight nanometer. And these two 10 nanometer germanium nano, germanium, natural germanium layers were acting as barrier layers to avoid interdiffused silicon reaching germanium isotope super lattice. And finally, we grew a silicon germanium cap layer on the top as a stressor. And strains are easily relaxed uh, during the kneading uh, due to the creation of dislocation. So we examined all of the samples with cross-section transmission electron microscopy or XTM before and after diffusion and kneadings. This is the uh, uh, XTM image for, for the grown samples. And here is the surface and cap layer, strange germanium layer, buffer layer and the virtual substrate. And these are after diffusion and kneadings at 550 degrees for one to six hours. And these observations show low dislocation density, which, which did not play any significant part in the diffusion processes, remains uh, through diffusion and kneadings. Besides, all of the samples were examined uh, with uh, symmetrical 2 to 4 broker space mapping uh, before and after the fusion meetings. Now this is the RSM result for, for other grown samples. And QI is reciprocal lattice unit which corresponds to horizontal lattice constant. And QX, 
is a reciprocal lattice unit which corresponds to ba ho excuse me, vertical lattice unit and corresponds to horizontal lattice unit. And here we see silicon substrate peak and relaxed silicon germanium peak and compressed with in germanium peak. And uh, you can see so in a germanium peak appears right below the relaxed silicon germanium, uh, which means that the the horizontal lattice constant of strange germanium agrees with that of relaxed silicon germanium. So strange germanium is fully fully strained to relaxed silicon germanium. The the compressive strain of strange germanium layer of as a grown sample is 0.71 percent, uh, which corresponds to an in-plane stress of 0.95 gigapascal. After diffusion and kneading is at 550 degrees for for six hours, the strain became 0.66 percent, which is the only 7 percent relaxation compared to initial strain. So. Our sample, uh, especially strange many, is pseudomorphic, almost pseudomorphic to, to the silicon germanium layers. And this is the secondary ion mass spectroscopy or CMOS depth profiles of 74 germanium in the samples before and after 550 degrees annealing for one to six hours. And the simulation result by by using zombie, which is a which is a partial differential equation solver, and there are agreements, good agreements between CMOS results and simulation results, and we obtained a value of 6.4 times 10 to minus 18 square centimeter per second as a germanium self diffusivity self diffusivity in germanium on the compressive strain of 0.71%. And this value is about 3.5 times higher compared to unstrained germanium. And the same processes were took place in the temperature range of 475 to 600 Celsius degrees. And this is a temperature dependence of germanium self diffusivities um, based on Arrhenius expression. And this blue is the result for, for unstrained germanium obtained in this work. And that the green dash line corresponds to result for unstrained germanium reported in 2008. And, and our values are fully consistent with the reported values. On the other hand, the red symbols show the results for compressive strain germanium obtained in this work. And germanium self refusion in compressive strain germanium is enhanced in, in the entire temperature range which we employed for the study. So what's the, what's the origin of the enhancement? The temperature dependence of self diffusivity is given by an Arrhenius expression, which includes activation enthalpy here. And activation enthalpy is given by the sum of two components, activation energy, and the other is activation volume, time. So it has been proposed that uh, the, the effect of stress over pressure on diffusion in solids can be ex uh, explained, somewhat dynamically explained by the concept of, concept of activation volume. So now germanium self diffusion in germanium takes place by a simple vacancy mechanism. And in the case of that vacancy mediated to diffusion, this activation volume can be defined as volume change of a lattice upon the formation and the migration of a vacancy. And it can, can be 
given by this equation, which can be obtained from, experimentally obtained from the pressure derivative of self-diffusivity. And this term is PB, is a thermodynamic work of the lattice against the stress field when the, when the vacancy migrates, forms and migrates. And let's say under atmospheric pressure, this term is negligibly small compared to activation energy. So activation enthalpy becomes activation energy. However, we have biaxial stress on the sam samples, so this term cannot be neglected. And when the work is a positive work, the, the activation enthalpy increases as a result, self diffusivity decreases. When it's a negative work, and then the combat occurs. So it can be positive or negative work, uh, depending on which kind of strain the, the lattice has. So I'd like to explain activation volume models and the hydrostatic stress. So activation volume is the sum of two components, formation volume and the migration volume. And formation volume, so, so for thin film geometry, uh, the vacancy source is the free surface of the lattice. And when the vacancy created in crystalline germanium lattice, the one germanium atomic atom, germanium atom leaves the lattice site and migrates to the free surface. So the volume of the lattice increases by one germanium atomic volume. Besides, uh, the lattice surrounding the vacancy relaxes into the vacancy center. So this leads to shrinkage of the lattice. Uh, so this is relaxation volume. When the vacancy migrates, this shrinkage of the lattice is expanding more. Uh, this is migration volume. So the activation volume becomes the sum of three components, increase, decrease, decrease of the volume. So, so smaller than one germanium, germanium atomic volume because these two terms are negative volume. And this activation volume interacts with hydrostatic stress. And that is, does a negative work, uh, excuse me, positive work against the stress field. As a result, uh, activation enthalpy increases because this is positive work, and then self-diffusivity decreases. So in the case of biaxial stress, in our case, uh, the same processes as hydrostatic stress occurs. The only difference is that there is no normal force on the free surface because this is biaxial stress. So this volume increase by one germanium atomic volume at the free surface and relaxation and migration volume in the direction to the surface or inverse direction to the surface contributes, oh, excuse me, interact with zero stress and do not contribute to the work. As a result, activation volume becomes negative volume. So the work of the lattice against the stress field is a negative work and then self-diffusivity increases. And activation volume of the manual self-diffusion and the hydrostatic stress states of 0.24 times the manual atomic volume has been already reported in 1975. And we obtained minus 0.65 times germanium atomic volume. 
as a set of, uh, as a germanium, uh, excuse me, as a activation volume of self diffusion under compression by actual stress. By the combination of these two stress states, this relationship can be obtained. If the anisotropy in migration volume is negligibly small, the right hand side of this equation should be plus one germanium atomic volume. Indeed, by inserting this reported value and our value to, to this relationship, plus 1.2 times germanium atomic volume was obtained, which is fully consistent with the, the theoretical prediction. Yeah, let me summarize my talk. Uh, we have designed and conducted an experiment to obtain the germanium self diffusivity under compressive biaxial strain. And the germanium self diffusion was enhanced due to compressive strain. And the enhancement, the degree of enhancement is described quantitatively by, by the theoretical prediction of our activation volume model of a simple vacancy mediated diffusion. Thank you for listening.